Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Ted Yoho are continuing to go back and forth in the public eye. Um, so I want to show you the development, what's happened. So when we spoke about this recently, I believe what had happened was Ted Yoho gave his non-apology apology on the floor of Congress. And so I covered that and, and we discussed how he ended it by saying, like, I will not apologize for my passion. I will not apologize for my God. I will not apologize for my family. It was just all, like, nobody ever told you to apologize for any of those things, ever, ever. <laughs> and you're just, you're trying to, like, change the topic because you got caught being a dick. Just don't up to it. You were a dick. Actually apologize and move on. That's it. He didn't do that. He had to, like, make it a grandiose thing. I'm on the right side, sir. It's like, okay, just fucking relax. Pipe down, fuckface. But anyway, so... Um... We covered it, and my commentary was like, wow, Ted Yoho is ridiculous. The thing that pissed me off the most was the thing that he keeps repeating about how... Um... Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is, like, telling people to commit crimes if they're poor. He's making it seem like she's giving people the green light to commit crimes when what she was saying was an explanation of where she thinks crime comes from. She's saying, well, of course, poverty will lead to an increase in the crime rate. Because when you don't have anything, those people are more likely to try to steal to get things. Like, that's the point she was making, but he was making it seem like she was morally asserting it is okay and I would be, I will allow you to like commit crimes if you're poor. That's not what she said. But he lied about it and kept repeating it. So anyway, he was super obnoxious with that. Um, and so Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez went on the floor of the house. Here she is responding to his non-apology apology. You're going to see little snippets of that here. And then also I'm going to show you here, Ted Yoho went on Fox News after... Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez responded to his non-apology, and um, he said some more stuff. So I'll show you what both of them are saying, and then we'll discuss. Two days ago, I was walking up the steps of the Capitol when Representative Yoho um, suddenly turned a corner, um, and he was accompanied by Representative Roger Williams, and accosted me on the steps right here in front of our nation's Capitol. I was minding my own business, walking up um, the steps, and Representative Yoho put his finger in my face. He called me disgusting. He called me crazy. He called me out of my mind. Um, and he called me dangerous. And then he took a few more steps. And after I had recognized his, uh, after I had recognized his, his comments as rude, he walked away and said, I'm rude. You're calling me rude. I took a few steps ahead and I walked inside and cast my vote um, because my constituents send me here each and every day to fight for them and to make sure that they are able to keep a roof over their head, that they're able to feed their families, and that they're able to carry their lives with dignity. I walked back out and there were reporters in the front of the Capitol and in front of reporters, Representative Yoho called me and I quote, a fucking bitch. These are the words that Representative Yoho levied against a congresswoman. The congresswoman that not only represents New York's 14th congressional district, but every congresswoman and every woman in this country. Because all of us have had to deal with this in some form, some way, some shape, at some point in our lives. Dehumanizing language is not new. And what we are seeing is that incidents like these are happening in a pattern. This is a pattern of, of an attitude towards women and dehumanization of others. Now, what I am here to say is that this harm that Mr. Yoho levied, it tried to levy against me was not just an incident directed at me. But when you do that to any woman, what Mr. Yoho did was give permission to other men to do that to his daughters. 
he gave, in using that language in front of the press, he gave permission to use that language against his wife, his daughters, women in his community. And I am here to stand up to say that is not acceptable. You know, um, I, I can go into that, but, you know, that was something, and I just, I asked her uh, if we could have a, a, a minute of her time and ask her a question. You did? Because she said you just accosted her. She didn't know what was coming at her. And then she said you called her disgusting. Did you call her disgusting? No, ma'am. I was coming down from boating up from the Capitol as I walk across, as I always do. And I was coming up, to, she was coming up the stairs, and I, I, I asked her, I says, hey, do you have a minute? And she goes, yes. And we've never had a conversation before. And I wanted to ask her about this policy that she was telling people it was okay to shoplift if you were hungry. And uh, it went backwards from there. So, but did, all right, did, you know, did, did you call her disgusting? And did you suggest that she was no. losing her mind? Did you use those words? You never said she was disgusting? You never said she was losing her mind. No, every, no, everything was directed at policy. Uh, when she told me that, yes, she thought it was right for people to go ahead and shoplift if you're hungry, I said, seriously, with as many social programs and faith-based programs and all these other and, and food kitchens around, the best that you can do is to offer people in your district um, to go ahead and shoplift while you're calling at the same time to defund the police. I said, those are just absolutely the most frickin' uh, crazy policy ideas I've ever had. And I said, your policy ideas are disgusting. And I turned around and walked away. And that now, was when really you turned around and walked away, as, did you... as that interaction lasted. Wait, these stories are so totally different uh, that the two of you are telling. So it's kind of hard to yeah. know, you know, who, who, which version is, is the truth. But when you turned around and walked down the stairs, did you refer to her as a F word, B word? No, I, I walked down the steps and I said, this is just such frickin' BS. But, and, and that's all I said. And then a reporter came up to me and said, what was that about? I said, no comment. Did you say this? I said, no comment. And I left. He's saying, I said, this is such fucking BS. She's saying he called me a fucking bitch. Um, she's saying that he said, you're disgusting, crazy, and out of your mind. He's saying, I didn't say you're disgusting. I said, that's disgusting, talking about a position she has. Uh, he didn't really say that he didn't say she's crazy and out of her mind, though, so he probably said those things for sure. Um, she said that he just kind of walked up and started, like, immediately. He's saying, I asked her if she had a minute of her time, if I could have a minute of her time. So, like, there's a... They're saying that it unfolded in different ways, clearly. Um, I do have to say, though... Wrap it up. We got to go. We got to go. We got to go. Like, what are we doing here? What are we doing here? You know, when you're younger, you look at Congress, you look at politicians, and you think, oh, well, these people who are smarter and better than me are on top of are on top of everything. And then you watch something like this unfold, and you're like, oh, no, that's, that's actually not the case at all. They're human beings, and they're deeply flawed human beings, and... This is like a high school thing that we're watching unfold here. That's what this is. This is like a high school thing. And um, I have to say, even though the media is having a field day with this, a field day with this, I don't think your average American gives a fuck about the altercation that happened between Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Ted Yoho. I don't think your average American gives a fuck. You want to know why? 32% of the country couldn't pay their July housing payment. 28 million Americans could be homeless within the next year or two. 28 million. We have like anywhere from 500,000 to a million right now. We're talking about 28 million. We have a country that's falling apart. We have 20% real unemployment. We have a pandemic where 140,000 people are dead. So I'm just, we got to stop. Like, we got to, we got to go. We got to go. We got to go. And, you know, listen, you don't, it doesn't require any convincing. 
to me that Ted Yoho is trash. <laughs> like, that doesn't require any convincing at all. He's a Republican congressman who admits that he was on food stamps when he was a kid, and now he supports cutting food stamps. He's, he said, oh, I was poor, I know how terrible it is. He's not even in favor of raising the minimum wage to a living wage. So he wants people to work full time and still be poor. And he was poor. It takes zero convincing to tell me that Ted Yoho is trash. Okay, that's obvious to me. That's clear. But we don't need, that's it. It's over. We don't need to dive into it. You don't need to, you know, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez doing this thing where she's saying like, by calling me a bitch, he's basically calling all women bitches because he's giving the green light for, you know, people to say it to other women, to say it to his daughter, to say it to his wife or whatever. We get it. He's a piece of trash. <laughs> Point made. Let's go. Let's move on here. And, you know, unfortunately, I do think that this whole thing, it, it's just a stark reminder that this is the shit they're actually thinking about. This is the shit that they're actually thinking about. This is what they're actually talking about behind closed doors. It is all like high school and it is all like personal. And yeah, I would hope, because I'm freaking naive as hell, I would have hoped that people in Congress are just sitting around thinking like about ideology, what their ideology is and their personal philosophies and what policies to, to fix the country. And even if they disagree with me, I would hope that they're thinking through like, how do we implement a vision to get the country from point A to point B? They're not. They're not. They're flawed people. It's like any workplace anywhere in the country. Flawed people who, you know, are social beings and who care about personal petty drama, unfortunately, probably over the country and what to do to fix it. So at this point, I'm just annoyed. Like I was somewhat <laughs> at early on, I remember hearing about the story and going like, oh, like, it was interesting, and I was like, all right, let's talk about this, and it just so happened that by the time I did my last segment, um, Ted Yoho had done his ridiculous non-apology apology. And so, you know, we spoke about it after that, but at this point, I'm watching this, and I'm going, I just, let, let's go, let's move on. I don't, I don't care, I don't care, I don't want to think about this, I don't want to talk about this, I want you guys to be bigger than regular people, and I want to move on here. Um, so it, you know what it seems like to me? It seems like there is sort of this yearning for the continuation of the civility and decorum mindset in DC. And even that's going away, especially in the era of Trump. And when you look at the Republicans like Ted Yoho, they're so thoroughly brainwashed by Fox News that he thinks Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is like actively trying to destroy the country and he thinks she's greenlighting people to commit crimes if they're poor when what she was doing is trying to explain where she thinks crime comes from, not giving a green light for it or whatever. Um, but this is all too indicative of what's happening in the country right now. You have the Republicans who have totally lost their minds and they're complete assholes. The, the elected Republicans, I mean. Just... And they've been so brainwashed by Fox News that, like, they can't see straight. They think the Democrats are, like, Satan. But then you have the Democrats, and it's like, what's the focus there? Civility and decorum. Oh, why can't we just get along and can't you be, like, a better person? That ship has sailed. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. That ship has sailed. There ain't no hope for these fuckers, okay? <laughs> There's no hope. So you could give a, a thousand grandstanding speeches from now until you're 80, and it ain't gonna change Dickie McGee's acts in terms of how they act and and what they do and the things they say. And so in some ways, I just feel like there's no point in doing the whole, like, let's try to yearn for the days of civility and decorum. And maybe that's me because I have a uniquely thick skin and I'm used to, like, you know, taking all sorts of nonsense. Maybe that's why. But when I look at this, I think there's no reason to even waste our breath 
trying to do the whole like, you're treating all women like this, and that's unacceptable. Even if he agreed with that point, he still wouldn't care. He'd be like, yeah, so? <laughs> yeah, this is what I do. whoop de doo So, I don't know. I think the Democrats need to, like, get past this yearning for civility and decorum. Ted Yo is a piece of trash. But that's fine. Like, let him be a piece of trash. And let the world see who he really is. But for us, there's no reason to, like, you know, try to get him back to some semblance of civility and decorum. This is who they are. Let them rep it. Let them show the world. And, you know, meanwhile, if we just swat them aside and we plow forward and focus on policy to improve people's lives, I think that speaks volumes. I really do. I think that speaks volumes. But instead, now it's like we're everybody's dragged into the petty personal drama. And I think everybody looks ridiculous, I have to say.